Hey everyone, I hope you're all well out there and staying safe. Well, this week I'm a little excited, but also a little um, anxious because I'm going to give that drop vase another go. Now, if you remember, that first one I tried a few weeks ago ended up in a complete failure. In fact, it failed in a way I really didn't expect. But again, that was the first time I ever tried a drop vase. And sadly, that's part of the whole learning process. I mean, unless you've been lucky enough to go and have classes and pick up a lot of information from that, which I haven't, most of what I get is from the internet or books. And that always seems to be lacking a bit. So um, most of it's trial and error and part of trial and error, sadly, is failures. But I've got the courage and I'm going to give it a go. Now, unfortunately, this type of project wastes quite a bit of glass. If you think about it, if you cut that rim off, there's a large rim around the vase that you cut off and that ends up as waste. And with the cost of art glass, obviously you don't want waste because you've got to find a way to use that in another project. I mean, it's possible, but you've sometimes got to be fairly creative how you use the scrap glass. So I hummed and hard about doing this. Um, not that I wouldn't do it eventually, but just not this early. But here we are, and we're going to give it a go. And um, to help with the glass, I'm going to use another failed project as the base piece, and then I'll just decorate that a little bit. So, will it work? Or will we end up with another failure? Well, hang around to the end, and you'll find out. Don't forget, if you got any questions, put them in the comments section below. And if you get to the end of the video and you like it, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. So let's get on and hopefully make this drop vase. So what I'm going to use today is a piece that I made a while back and it is just basically opal white on black that's why it looks a bit gray and then it had some dots down the bottom down here i had intended doing more with it but the white i should have used um, opaque white on there i would have had a, a crisper white so anyway um, to do another test of this drop mold i didn't want to go to a great deal of trouble with some design um, and I thought this is a nice, simple way of doing it. So I'm just going to use this piece. I'm going to decorate. I've got little bits of vitrograph here and some dots. And this piece originally had blue dots in it. I'm going to cover them up with the red ones and hopefully hide the blue. Because the center part is pretty much what's going to stretch. And this just fits this mold. So I'm going to actually push it a little bit more into the middle there, concentrate it a little bit more. Now, you're probably wondering, I've got a square piece here. I'm going to put it on that. Some time ago, I vaguely remember seeing somebody do a video or seeing it somewhere. Well, they actually did use a square piece and the corners slumped down, but they didn't go right down. So it didn't, didn't trap the mold itself. But what it did do is it anchored the piece on the top so that it didn't pull right in so I'm um, hopefully that's what's going to happen here who knows we're all in for a big surprise well hopefully a nice one anyway I've got to clean this up then I'll lay everything up on it and we'll get it in the kiln and the first part is to fuse that on then I'm going to cap it with another sheet of three mil clear so we'll end up with um, nine mil thick, nice thick piece that we can then use to do our slump.
Okay, this is fused up and it has come out pretty much as I expected. Um, we've got some little bubbles in there. And I think that once it stretches down into the vase, it's going to have some interest to it. And I'm interested to see what happens with the bubbles, whether they also sort of stretch out. Now, I'm going to sandblast the back of it because I want the inside of the bowl to have a um, satin sort of finish to it, just to give it something different. I'm not going to do anything else to this other than clean it, obviously. Now, when I do put it on the um, this ring mould, I've got some thin fire paper that I've cut here that um, will go on it. And I'll give you a shot of that very shortly. But the first thing, I'm going to go and sandblast the back of this. And then I'll clean it up and we'll put it up on the mould and get this thing going. By the way, if you remember the last attempt, I am not going to be going too far away from the kiln. I'll be watching it as well, actually, long before it gets up to the uh, processing temp. And um, we'll see what happens. Isn't that a nice mess? Um, Anne actually heard this when it broke. Um, it had gone through the entire cycle. Um, and towards the very end, probably I think it was about 50 or 60 degrees left. She said she heard a like a ping and then a tinkle, not a kaboom. You look at it, you think there was a big kaboom went on. But no, it was, it was like a ping when it cracked and then a tinkle as all the bits fell onto the shelf. 
so I knew what to expect. Um, so I had a fair idea what I was going to see when I opened the kiln. So what happened? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. First, let's have a look at how it all went as far as the slump and whether we could have had a really nice bowl. Because I think we would have had a very nice bowl. I'll just show you why. If you remember, the piece I put on looked a bit ordinary. It didn't have any real um, great design to it. But once it's stretched, you can see how it stretched everything out, including the bubbles. If you remember, I wondered about these bubbles and it stretched the bubbles as well. So I think it would have been a really nice bowl. Now, a couple of things to show you the thickness. See down here how thick the glass is? Get it into focus there, it's quite thick. Whereas when you get up to the top, it thins out. So that shows you how much the glass is stretching. And it's actually resulted in a nice thickness up there that I think would have um, would have worked well when I come to separate it from the from the ring. Oh, and the other thing is, it's nice and shiny inside. That I didn't really expect because I had sandblasted it and I thought I'd get a like a satin finish. But as you probably know, heat work is um, cumul accumulative, so. Um, Firing this for the length of time that I did at that low temperature is equivalent to firing it at a higher temperature for a shorter period of time. So basically it's had enough time to smooth out. So you've got a really nice smooth finish in there, but not quite what I wanted. So, why did it break? Here's what I think. Partway through the process, I noticed that um, these corners were folding over more than I expected them to. And you can see it's sort of folded right over the mold. It's come right over that mold. So that means it basically trapped the mold. And that led me to believe that I'm going to have something broken at the end. I'm either going to have the mold broken or the piece itself is going to break. At that time, I considered actually stopping it, take, letting it cool down, taking it out and cutting these corners off. But I thought, no, nah, let's just go for it. Let's see what happens. It'll be a good learning process. So why I think it broke is that the mould, I don't believe, expands and contracts to the degree that the glass does. So when the glass was cooling, it was pulling in against the mould and built up a lot of stress. And eventually it just went bang. I don't think it had anything to do with annealing. Um, I, you know, I think it was annealed well. And I think it was just the fact that it pulled in around the mould, built up that stress and eventually just gave way. Well... Unfortunately, another failure. Third time lucky, hopefully. By the way, if you're wondering, did the mould survive? Yes, it did. I had to cut it out because it still um, had trapped inside that glass. And I had to break up some of the glass to get it out. But very important to get the mould out because they're not cheap. Um, the other thing that I must mention too is with this... Um, fold over here something I realized that that was going to make life a little difficult for me in that because of where it was it was going to be very hard for me to get close in around I hope you can see that close in around the um, the bowl to be able to separate the bowl from the ring so that wasn't going to work even as if if this survived I was going to have a little trouble there Um, something else also is temperature. What this did teach me was um, I can go to a higher temperature than I thought 
before I worry too much about watching it as it's processing. Um, I started watching this, uh, I think it was about 600. Um, normally I would slump things at 6.30, but <laughs> I really wanted to make sure I kept an eye on this. But I probably could have left it probably to about 6.50 before I really started watching it. We'll try that in the next one. No, I won't. I'll probably watch it earlier. Um, but the temperature, the processing temperature for this finally was about 670. So it had to go reasonably high to get it to slump. And I think the reason is, is that obviously you got to soften the glass, but also the central piece here is just held very firmly. Whereas these around the side are not, they're, they're, they're sticking out. They've got no real support at all on this side. So they fell first. But this centerpiece had to soften a lot more before it would come down and fall to the uh, to the kiln. So um, next one, hopefully, I'll have that a little bit more in control. And we're not going to do the square piece. We're going to do it as a round piece of glass. And guess what I'm going to use for the glass? I'm going to use that one. I'm going to break it up. I'm going to melt it all down into a circle. And that's what I'm going to use in the next attempt. I don't think it'll look as pretty, but I'm not going to waste that glass. So I hope you gained more out of that than just some amusement. Um, I know I certainly did. I learnt a lot out of that little exercise. Um, don't forget your questions and comments in the comment section below. If you want to watch a couple of suggested videos, you'll find them up there. Our subscribe button's right there. Don't forget your notifications. And until the next video, I'll say bye for now.